<laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Grill It Grilling class. I'm Stephanie Jordan. I'm the local food program manager at Sustainable Solano, and we are doing our cooking series featuring specialty crops. Uh, these are crops that are growing right now by our local farmers and include vegetables, fruits, tree nuts, and culinary herbs. Um, and this is part of a cooking series that we will be doing virtually and hopefully live one day between now and March of 2022. So I thought, you know, it's August, it's hot outside, nobody wants to turn on their oven, so let's do a grilling class. And we're going to talk about some different grilling methods and um, different ways to cook a lot of these bountiful summer crops that are growing all over the county. I will also reference a few farms where you can find some of these great specialty crops right now. Um, they are very abundant. So uh, there, were, there was definitely one recipe that I wanted to do today, and I will have Allison share that uh, in, right now, I guess it's fine. It's the brined and grilled carrots with a cilantro yogurt sauce. So this is probably not something you might think of doing on the grill, but I thought, you know, we always grill or brine our meats. I brine chicken and pork religiously, and so let's try brining some uh, vegetables, especially some really hard, you know, ones that aren't, don't cook as quickly like carrots. So we're going to grill some carrots. And then once we come back in from the grill, I will do the cilantro yogurt sauce, which is pretty straightforward. It's basically everything goes into a blender. Um, okay, thank you, Allison. So the recipes are found on our website, sustainablesolano.org. And you can go to the uh, local food page, and then you'll see some links to the cooking classes and also the recipes. And from there, you can download it as a PDF or view it however you'd like. So I am doing a full um, version of that recipe. And then the other one that I wanted to do was kind of a wild card based on what I got in my CSA box this week. And so what I got was mostly this. <laughs> what I'm going to do with these ingredients is make a grilled um, ratatouille. So it's, you know, all the ingredients that go into your standard French ratatouille, um, tomatoes, zucchini, eggplant, onions, garlic, and all that good stuff. But we're going to grill it and then add kind of a simple vinaigrette. So it's going to be more like a grilled ratatouille salad, I would say. But I think it would taste um, really good just served at room temp. Even a little bit warm would be fine. So before we head out to the grill, I wanted to walk through the... I'm going to shift this down a little bit. Hold on here. Get my view here. We'll see if my head gets chopped off. I don't know, sort of, kind of there. That's all right. So first we have the eggplant and I'm going to just break off the leaves. You could do your eggplant a couple of different ways. Um, I'm not going to bother to salt it because what happens when we grill is that you're putting it on such intense heat that all the extra liquid in there just vaporizes. So we're not going to worry about the salting procedure. However, if I was going to cook the eggplant and then incorporate it into another dish, or if I'm, um, you know, putting it into like, say, a vegetarian lasagna or something, then I would want to salt it to get rid of any extra moisture. And some people think it also takes the bitterness away. So I'm going to cut my eggplant. You can see I, I cut off the top and the bottom, so I now have a stable surface. And I'm going to cut it into these long planks about half of an inch to three quarters of an inch thick. All right, so I got about four planks out of there. And these are nice big pieces that won't fall through the grill. So I'm going to lay those out on my pan. And then I have my zucchini. And I'm going to do that in essentially the same way. These are thinner, so I'm just going to cut off the top and the bottom. And I'm just going to cut them in half lengthwise all the way through like that so that I have, again, planks to put on the grill. Okay. And these are also in varying size. If you end up with yellow squash, especially the yellow crookneck squash, what works well, I find, because those are, you know, designed to grow rather in a way where you have a narrow neck at the top and then you have kind of a larger bulbous part at the bottom. So I would cut off the top neck part and then treat them as two separate pieces. So you have the top neck, which you may not even have to cut in half, and then usually the larger, um, fatter section at the bottom, you would cut in half into a plank. Okay, next we have tomatoes. I'm going to cut out the core, 
<clears throat> you don't necessarily have to use a giant chef knife like I am. I'm just gonna give this a quick, quick go. This is about one pound of tomatoes. And for this ratatouille recipe, I kind of ran out of time to get the recipe up, but I will get that up as soon as we're done with the class. I'll send it over to Allison and have her post it. So by tonight, you will have both of these recipes. Okay, so these, I think, these are not heirlooms. These are, I believe, early girl tomatoes. And I have a couple yellow and a red. And they're not as soft and juicy as the heirlooms. Um, I don't think I would use an heirloom tomato. They're almost too juicy and they're just gonna kind of fall apart on the grill. So you wanna have tomatoes that are rather firm. And I'm just gonna cut it in half, like through the equator. And we're just gonna put that, those halves on the grill really quick to give them a little sear. So. There's my tomatoes. And once I get all these lined up, then we will um, brush it with some oil. Okay, last but not least, I have sort of the equivalent of two bell peppers. These are gypsy peppers, and I got them in my CSA box from Terra Firma this week. They range in color from yellow to yellowish greenish to orangish to a, a nice red color. So these are a little smaller. So I'm going to put um, a special pan on the grill once we get out there. I have it staged already out there. So, you know, these are tiny and they might fall through the grate. So I'm gonna use a different kind of a grill pan. So for now, I'm just gonna kind of have them and take out the seeds and any really large membranes. And then these will be ready to go. <clears throat> You can definitely use standard bell peppers um, if you want to spice it up a little, although then it really wouldn't be ratatouille. <laughs> you could put in some other interesting peppers. There was one that I came across and I got from Wilkinson Acres, which is a farm um, in Sassoon Valley. They're on Gordon Valley Road. They had a pepper called not a pino. So it's like a jalapeno. It has the smoky flavor of a jalapeno, but it does not have the heat of a jalapeno. So if you have any family members or even yourself who does not like super spicy, but you kind of like that smokiness that you get from a jalapeno, it's a good option to try. All right, so here's my peppers and I've, a couple of the planks are a little bit large. So just so they cook evenly, I'm gonna try to get them all into a uniform size you know, roughly, kind of based on my smallest piece. So I'm going to put the um, peppers into, I'm going to put the peppers into a bowl and just toss them with oil that way. And then the other vegetables I will use a little brush on. So I am grilling, so I'm not going to use high-end olive oil. I'm going to just use kind of some basic grocery store olive oil and a little salt and pepper. And that's all we're going to do with our ratatouille vegetables is just oil, salt, and pepper. So give these a little pot just to coat them. Okay, so there's my peppers oiled and ready to go. Here is a very handy little tool. This is a silicone brush, and I use it almost every time I grill vegetables. So I just want to lay everything out so that it's more or less flat. And then I'm going to just brush this. It kind of makes this oiling process go quickly so that you can get a lot done in a short amount of time. So if you're doing this on a weeknight and you have hungry children, like I often do, we get out the brush. Sometimes I have the kids help me brush the vegetables. Okay, there's my first side. And then I will also point out my onions here in a second. All right. So I'm going to flip this over. Oh, whoops, I forgot to put my salt and pepper on. Hold on, I'm forgetting something. All right, so my oiled side is still up. Let me do a little sprinkle. This is kosher salt. Um, we talked a lot about salt in my last class. And so when you're doing things like grilling, um, I highly recommend kosher as opposed to like an iodized salt. It will kind of stick to the product better. You have more control when you're salting um, with your fingers because if you do the iodized salt with your fingers, it's really easy to just end up with clumps of salt all over your, your product, whatever you're doing, and it doesn't get distributed evenly. 
Okay, so here's my second side oiling up. Some of it's kind of got oiled already just from when I turned it. Okay, and then we'll do a little salt. Okay, and then I'm going to just do kind of a hearty round of pepper on this one side with my pepper grinder. And then we will head to the grill. Okay, so essential for the grill are good tongs. And here are my onions. I just wanted to show you this is a skewer, which is actually flat. And I wish I could remember the brand. I've had them forever. They have like a little picnic basket, a little picnic table um, cutout on the handle, but they're, they're flat. So when you put things on it, they don't rotate around the skewer and start spinning around as easily. So if you can find this kind of skewer, I recommend it. So I took my onion and just cut it into thick slices and then skewered it on here. And the reason I did this is because now it's really easy to flip and manage once you get it onto the grill. So, and I don't even really have to try to grab the skewer. I can just grab like one of these onion pieces and flip it the whole thing over. So that's what I recommend for the skewer. All right, we have our peppers and all of this stuff. Let's see, I'm gonna, I have tongs out there. I'm gonna run this out to the grill and then I'm gonna grab my laptop and take that out and then I will see you in a minute outside. So hold on. Okay, I'm back. We're gonna travel the short distance. Down here, let's see if I can get this set up so that it makes sense. I think you guys can see me okay. Okay, how's that, Allison? Thumbs up? That's good, yeah. Okay, <laughs> good. Okay, so, while Allison was giving you the tutorial, I went ahead and lit this thing. This is an old grill. It's about ready to die, but it's hanging in there. So I thought, let's do one more grill class. And it's large. It's a big grill. I've had it for, for eons. So it is lit on high. All four burners have been going pretty strong, and it's really very hot. So um, at this point, I want to clean the grates. And that means you take like your big brush and just wipe everything down and scrub it down. And we're just getting all the old food off, which is basically burnt at this point. It's helpful to have a long sleeve shirt on when you're grilling, so that if you have a grill that goes back a little ways, you can reach back there and not get your arms too burnt. Okay. All right, so I am cleaned and ready to go. So these have been on high, like I said. I'm gonna turn them down just a hair. And you know that your grill is hot when you can hold your hand about five inches above for about three seconds before it starts to be really hot. So this is definitely ready to go. So we're gonna do all of our ratatouille ingredients first. So here are my peppers. <clears throat> to make life easy, I have a couple of grill pans. I'm gonna show you a couple options. I'm gonna use this one. So this is, a, well, can't see anything here. <laughs> there it is. This is a flatter version. Here's what it looks like on the side. It has a little bit of a lip and it has all these perforated holes in the middle. So I'm just gonna throw that on, on the corner and put my peppers on. And then once this pan heats up, these will start to grill. But this helps them to not fall through the grates and get all over the inside of the grill. All right, I hear a little bit of sizzling starting. So we'll let those go. Um, you just wanna leave whatever little bit of oil is left in the bowl. I'm not gonna dump that on here because it'll just cause like a grease fire. So we just leave that alone. And now I'm gonna just load on all my other items for the um, ratatouille. So eggplants, this was about a one and a half pound eggplant. 
the onions. We'll put all these zucchinis on. So you should definitely hear a sizzling noise once everything gets loaded on here. I might need to put, I'm gonna stick a couple of the small zucchini pieces on here with the peppers, just cause I, I can tell right now I'm kind of running out of room already. I wanna make sure to get everything on here at the same time. Okay, and then I'm gonna put my tomatoes. I kind of know where my hot spots are in the grill. They all, you know, I have yet to meet a grill that's really cooked super evenly. So, you know, I know that right here it's gonna be hot. So those zucchini I'll probably have to rearrange. Um, you know, we'll see, we'll kind of move stuff around. All right, and I'm gonna close this to kind of help speed up the cooking process a little bit. While that is cooking, I will show you the other grill pan that I have, which is more like, you know, a pan, an actual pan, like a saute pan and whatnot. It's much deeper on the sides. It still has this basket um, type of design and the perforation all over it so that the heat will come through great. Um, I use this a lot if I want, you know, to just whip up some grilled onions really quick and I don't want to deal with the skewering option. So I'll just cut the onions into little wedges so I have a mishmash and I'll toss them in the bowl like I did with the peppers and some olive oil, put this pan in the grill, let it heat up, and then um, transfer the onions into here and then just stir it, almost like I'm stirring them in a saute pan. So that's kind of what I like about these types of pans is that, you know, it's almost like you can turn your grill into a range top by using something like this and visualizing it as, you know, a saute pan. Um, another product that works great with this kind of pan is shrimp. So, you know, again, you can kind of mix it around. I wouldn't use um, a really heavy um, or excessive marinade with this because it's all just going to go right through and you're going to be kind of wasting your marinade product. But if you have like a dry seasoning rub on your shrimp, that would work great too. You want to have a little bit of oil, but, you know, just be careful. You don't want to have too much. Otherwise, it's just going to be like all of this you know, fire flame, <laughs> flaming up. So those are the two grill pans that I use a lot. I'm gonna go back to this one for a second. Another good use for this one is asparagus. Um, so we're kind of past asparagus season right now, but asparagus is hard to grill without one of these because they're so thin and they will fall through. Um, another good thing to use for this pan would be garlic. And what you can do with that is to, um, Toss your garlic cloves after you've peeled them in some oil, add a little salt and pepper, and you can put some foil down on here and then kind of like wrap up your cloves in a little packet of foil and then plop it on top of here onto the grill. And then you can, it'll actually kind of help caramelize your garlic cloves and then you can throw those on whatever you'd like. So you'll have like some quick roasted garlic. And again, you want to take the cloves out of the head and out of their little papery skins and then put them on your, your foil packet on here um, first. You could also do the whole head, you know, why not? Um, so it's good for those small things. Oh, the other product, which I recommend using um, the other pan that's more like a saute pan would be green beans. That's another one that <laughs> is kind of hard to grill unless you have the right kind of pan. So for the green beans, you know, same process. Give a little olive oil, salt and pepper, put them on your grill pan and then you're good to go. So let's see how things are doing in here. All right, my zucchini is just getting marked. So let's see if I can I'm gonna adjust my heat a little bit here. All right, I'm gonna check my tomatoes too. They're not quite there. Oh, almost, they're just starting. Okay, so let me flip these back over. And I'll try to show you what's just starting to happen here on the zucchini. So we're getting some grill marks. Zucchini, as you guys know, can be eaten raw as well as cooked. So the goal is to not have mushy zucchini or eggplant. We wanna have, you know, cooked through, but not super soft. So this eggplant in the back is already marked up pretty well. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip that one. And these over here are being a little slower. So I'm gonna start moving things around because I see where the warm area is. 
Okay, there we go. Put this guy over here. Oh, that, that eggplant's almost there. Okay, so I'm just gonna be kind of monitoring this little by little as we go along. Tomatoes are almost ready to flip. Let's see how the onions are doing. Okay, they're almost there too. I'm gonna give my peppers a little stir. The peppers are now getting a little bit caramelized on the back. I have some weird lighting back here. Sun's coming out. So I'm gonna flip my peppers. And the other thing I'm noticing is that the peppers are starting to get a little soft and almost like fl flexible when I'm stirring them around. They're not as stiff as they were when I was chopping them up. So that's my other sign that things are moving along. Okay, I'll probably get to take the peppers off fairly quickly. All right, that zucchini is definitely ready to flip. Stick that over there. Turn those over. Okay, back down we go. All right, while we're waiting for this, I'm gonna explain what I did with the carrots for the other recipe. <clears throat> So here are my carrots, and they've been sitting in a brine, which has been um, made of four cups water and a half a cup of kosher salt. And you want to brine them for about 45 minutes to an hour. So I started this probably about quarter to four-ish. I'm not sure what time it is now, four, almost 4.30, great. So once a few veggies are done there, then we'll put these on. Um, what I'm gonna do well, let me back up. The carrots were scrubbed, but not peeled. So if you peel them, then they will absorb a lot of that salt a little too much. So by leaving the peel on, you know, you're, you're letting them brine, but you're not letting all of that salt in. So I just scrubbed them, plopped them in my brine, and just left them at room temperature for the roughly 45 minutes. You could go the full hour. Um, I could probably go an hour of brining on these because these are pretty big. These are not, um, you know, there's a note in the recipe not to use baby carrots. So we're not looking for the little baby carrots that are this big and come in the bag. We're looking for young carrots, which typically come with the tops still on. They're found at a lot of farmer's markets these days. And, you know, sometimes they're multiple colors. Any color carrot would work fine. Um, we want to, you know, find some that are, you know, probably no more than about five inches long um, and relatively skinny. These tend to be kind of fat carrots. So again, I could brine them a little longer and I may even grill them a little bit longer too. So you can do this procedure with the brining in advance. Um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna pull them out. <clears throat> I have a different pan here. Hold on, let me put this down. So this is just a hotel pan and I've just got a, a kitchen towel in here. So I'm gonna pull the carrots out of my brine and stick them on the towel and just dry them off a little bit. All right. I need to check and see what's happening in here. I hear sizzling, so it's time to do some flipping. Okay, looks good. I think everything's going to get flipped. Oh, this looks awesome. All right. Onions flipped over. These peppers are just about done. Another couple of seconds there. All right, tomatoes are gonna flip. And all right, that's still good too. Okay, so pretty soon I'm gonna pull those peppers off. Um, so as I was saying with the carrots, you can pull them out of the brine pat them dry, and then put them in the fridge for two or three hours before you grill, that is totally fine. So you can do the brining in advance. If you you know, think you're going to be grilling something for dinner and you've got the grill on, you know, you can just kind of throw them on when you're doing your other stuff and it works totally fine. So, all right. I'm going to get my ratatouille pan out here and start taking some items off. I'm going to take off the peppers. And then I will pull this uh, grill pan off and we'll put our carrots on. 
Okay, so there's the first bunch of things. I'm gonna use two tongs to maneuver this thing so I don't burn myself. So let's stick it down here. Okay, now, I'm gonna make sure my carrots are dried off a little bit. All right, carrots on. I'm just putting these crosswise on my grates. The bigger ones I probably could put this way. All right, let's get them all spaced out there. So when you're grilling all of this good stuff, you wanna make sure you have a little bit of space between all of your products. If they're too crowded and you you know, get it on there too close and everything's touching, then you, you kind of end up um, almost not really steaming, but you're not gonna get those nice crispy edges and nice grill marks that you normally would get. Um, so just keep in mind, you wanna have things not touching each other on the grill so that there's airflow between all of your products. Um, okay, Allison, I'm gonna pause in case there's any questions here. Yes, there are a few questions. Um, so on the, the grilling, what temperature do you have the, the grill on for both of these recipes? And what is the purpose of brining the carrots? Okay, so um, the temperature of the grill right now has been hovering around 400. When I first came out here, it was probably up past like 550, it was super hot. But right now, it's kind of, you know, staying around the 400 mark. Um, you know, of course, every time I open it and close it, you know, hot air comes out, cool air goes in, it kind of has to reset. But if you do have some, a good grill with a really reliable temperature control, you know, I would say anywhere between 400 to 450 would be an ideal temperature for these types of veggies in here. Um, brining the carrots, anytime you brine, it maintains the juiciness. So it also is going to help with some heat transfer through that vegetable. Now, the carrots are not going to get cooked um, completely thoroughly through so that they're mushy. You know, it's going to be very like on the crisp tender side. All we're really doing for the carrots is we want to have some heat go through to the middle of the carrots to start to soften it. And I also want to have some caramelization on the outside to add some flavor. So, but the purpose of brine is to ensure that your thing that you're grilling, be it the carrots or the pork or the chicken, it ensures that it doesn't dry out as bad. <laughs> you know, we've probably all had overcooked, dried out chicken breasts. And so by brining, it helps to maintain that moisture inside. Um, so anyway, let's see if we can, not quite, all right. I'm just checking, you can move on to the next question, um, Allison, I'm just checking things in here. It usually doesn't take as long on the second side. All right, tomatoes are good. We um, did have a question um, from the beginning about substitution for if someone doesn't like cilantro, is there a substitution for the um, cilantro yogurt? Oh, cilantro yogurt thing? Um, yeah, you could probably do um, a combination of the carrot tops and some parsley if you just do not like cilantro. I mean, I think that Carrots and cilantro do tend to pair well together. Um, we're also going to put in some ground um, coriander, <laughs> blanking on the herb, um, which is kind of, you know, it's from the seeds of the cilantro plant. So you can just modify that um, with a different herb of your choice, but you could, you know, I think a parsley or, you know, we're going to use some of the carrot tops too, um, but you could do kind of a combination of those, those two things would work fine. I'm just trying to think what else um, chives would be good too with that. Um, and I'm looking at my herb garden over there. Those would be my top choices, I think. Yeah, do a parsley combo, a chive combo with the carrot top. If you can get carrots with carrot top. Um, yeah, if I think of something else, I'll let you know. But I think those are my top top choices. Okay, I'm just pulling off all this squash, the eggplant and the um, zucchini. So what I kind of like to do too is I'm sort of waving my eggplant around. When it feels a little bit flexible, then I know it's ready to come off. Same with the zucchini. You know, it's, it's not completely mush, but it's just starting to get a little bit flexible. So all of that is 
exiting. All right, and then I have my onions, which are done. They look nice and caramelized. I'm just gonna let this stuff sit here. And then I'm gonna scoot these carrots over. Okay, so they're just starting to get a little bit black and these are such large carrots. I'm gonna put them this way. When I did that, um, the other grilling class a little while ago with the corn, you know, if you position them parallel to your grill grates, then they won't roll around as much. And these are pretty fat carrots, so. Okay, there we are. All right, so we'll let that close. Okay, um, anything else while we're waiting for the carrots to cook? Those are the only questions we've had in the chat so far. So, okay. um, yeah, if anybody wants to drop more questions in, we can bring them up the next time you have a moment. Okay, sounds good. Um, let's see here. What was I going to talk about? Oh, I did mention, um, you know, olive oil. You could also use um, a neutral oil. You know, I'm just thinking about this carrot recipe. Um, we didn't oil the carrots um, there. You could, but you know, instead of doing the cilantro yogurt sauce, if you don't want to do the cilantro part, um, you could do a peanut oil on the carrots because there's peanuts in this recipe too. Um, so that's another option, but back to the oil. So um, I mentioned earlier, you know, I don't want to use like super expensive olive oil for grilling because the heat basically just kind of takes away all the nutritious, uh, nutritional value of the olive oil. A lot of the olive oil that is produced around here in Solano County, at least by some of the smaller producers, is really created for health benefits. And so if you don't have, you know, just some kind of standard, you know, olive oil on hand, um, sometimes grocery stores also sell those olive oil blends. You know, I would recommend the blend for grilling because what's happened with the blends and some of the more standard mainstream olive oils is that it's already been subjected to heat. And so the, the structure isn't going to change that much and you're not, you know, losing, you're not compromising that flavor that you would normally have with the higher end olive oils. So, you know, I will use an olive oil for my um, quick little dressing that's going to go on the ratatouille. So, but for grilling, I recommend going with, um, you know, just a, a, like a grocery store olive oil, something that's, you know, not as expensive. You could also use avocado oil, which has a higher smoking point than most olive oils. Um, and, you know, some of the other more neutral oils would work too, like the safflower, um, you know, peanut oil works great because it has a very high smoking point, um, but it kind of depends on what you're cooking and if you want that peanut flavor in here. Okay, one of these little carrots is feeling a little bit soft. So I think I'm just gonna let them go another couple minutes and then we'll pull them off. It shouldn't take more than about five to seven minutes for these larger carrots. And then we'll be done. And we'll go put together our, our other goods. Um, so I'm probably gonna do one more class in August going to chat with you guys while we're waiting for these carrots to cook. Um, it won't be next week. It'll probably be the 21st. And then I'm going to be taking, uh, you won't see me as much doing cooking, but you'll see some other chefs doing cooking in September, last week of August into September. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and plug this event while I have you all here. It's called Bounty of the County. We just started publicizing it yesterday. Um, I think Allison is putting a link up there. So what we're doing is we are having a little semi-virtual celebration of farmers, restaurants, and wineries in Solano County, and we're creating little trios. So we're matching up a farmer with a restaurant and a winery, and the restaurant is going to be purchasing a particular specialty crop or two from the farm, and they'll work it into their menu or create a special Bounty of the County dish, and then the uh, winery will provide a wine to go with that. And each week in September, at sorry, end of August through September, it's about six weeks total, the trio will be on a Zoom call um, with me and Allison. I'll probably be moderating these Zoom calls. And so we will be featuring a different trio each week during the event. 
and they will each talk about, you know, the farmer will talk about what they're growing, the restaurant will talk about what they're cooking and how to access the dish. And then the winery will talk about how to get their wine and how it works into the meal, um, if it is being part of the uh, food and wine package. So just something to look forward to. Keep your eye out for publicity and promotion around that. Should be a lot of fun. We've got a really great lineup of restaurants and um, farmers and wineries, all based in Solano County. And we're hoping that it'll kind of help get people out to explore the farms, pick up some products at farm stands, and also patronize our local restaurants. So look out, <laughs> here it comes. <laughs> all right, I have some blackening going on on the carrots. There's one of them. And I'm gonna pull them off because they are probably done enough, yeah. I, you know, it's hard to, they're not gonna wiggle like the zucchini did, but when I kind of tap it against the grill, it's feeling a little bit softer here. So the smaller ones are done, these bigger ones, I could probably leave on for another couple minutes, but just to keep things moving in the interest of time, <coughs> I'm gonna put them, let's see, I'm gonna leave that here. I'm just gonna stick them on this tray and we'll run them all in. Okay, so I'm going to run the food in. Let's turn all this off. Close that. Okay, I'm going to run this in and I will be back in a minute for the laptop. So stay tuned. Okay, I'm back, here we go. All right, can you guys all hear me okay? Volume's hanging in there. Volume's good. Okay, let's see here. I always end up cutting off my head. <laughs> A little bit. A little bit, okay, let me get it up just a tad. Oh, those windows are open in the back, I forgot to close those. Okay, good enough. All right, I set up my blender here too. Okay, so while we're waiting for this to cool down a little bit so I can cook it, we will put together our um, vinaigrettes and sauces. I'm just gonna scoot that over. All right, let me wash my hands again. So for the cilantro yogurt sauce, it's pretty easy. Everything goes into a blender. Let me grab the yogurt. We're gonna use a Greek style yogurt. You can do non-fat, low-fat, or full-fat, whatever you'd like to do. <clears throat> and let's take a look at all the ingredients for this. Okay, so there's my yogurt. All right, we have cilantro leaves and stems, which are here. We're going to use about a cup of those, and then we're also going to use about a cup of the carrot tops. So I went ahead and pre-washed these. Um, I took the tough stems, since these were a little bit larger carrots, the stems were a little bit woody. So I just am using the leafy part of the carrot tops. Um, for those of you that joined my, um, if you're interested in carrot tops, there was another class I did earlier in the spring, actually. It was a zero waste cooking, and so we made a carrot top pesto. So there's a few, a few uses for these little goodies. So we're gonna do a cup of the carrot tops, and if you don't have quite a cup, 
or don't have carrots with tops, you can just use all cilantro. It's entirely up to you. I'm going to fill in a little bit with this one because it was a little short. Okay, so there's. Okay, and then we have roughly a cup of the cilantro. <clears throat> And then I want to have a little extra cilantro for garnish at the end. So I'm going to leave a little bit here in the bowl. All right, All right next going in are uh, the peanuts and my jalapeno. So I need about three tablespoons of peanuts. And again, we're going to keep just a few for a garnish at the end. I'll go ahead and scoop that. I'm just going to give these a quick little rough chop. Let's see my garnish zone over there. I wouldn't probably have to give them a chop because we're going into a blender. All right, I need my favorite toy here, the scraper. All right, in they go. Then we have a half a cup of our yogurt. <clears throat> So again, I am using um, just a, pl uh, you want to do plain yogurt, don't do a flavor. We don't want vanilla. So this is just a plain um, Greek style. I think it's a low, oh no, it's a non-fat, which is what I happen to get from the store. All right. There's the yogurt. All right, next up is our jalapeno. So what I'm going to do with the jalapeno, let's throw this back in the fridge. I'm going to cut it up and use the, the flesh, but, and I'm going to keep the seeds reserved, just in case I want it to be spicier. So I cut it in half. All of the heat lives in the seeds and the membranes, which is on the inside. So I'm going to quarter it. And then I just take my knife and kind of slide it through to take the seeds and membranes out. And I'm just going to reserve those over here. This is a pretty large jalapeno, so I probably won't have to add anything back in. I think I'm going to have enough heat just from the pepper itself. But, you know, if you really want something super spicy, this is a good way to gauge the spiciness as you go and then add extra if you need it. Because once it goes in, you cannot get it out. <laughs> I'm just going to give this a quick chop so my blender can handle it. It's a pretty good blender, but. It always helps to give it a little pre-chop. Okay. All right, we're also gonna throw in an ice cube. The ice is gonna help keep things cold. It's gonna thin it down a little bit, and I also feel like ice kinda helps to keep things moving in the blender, because it's like, you know, when you make a smoothie, it's like that ice hits the, the um, blade, and then it kinda like, makes everything fly up again inside the blender. So um, now we need a little bit of ginger. So one teaspoon. <clears throat> and I'm just going to grate it on a microplane. So first I'm just scraping off the skin of the ginger with a spoon. Typically this works much better than using a peeler because you, you end up getting too much off. I just want that little thin skin layer off of the ginger, which comes off really easily with a spoon. And then once I have enough of the skin off, then I'll grate it with my microplane. Clean up my board a little bit here. Okay, so here's the tool I'm using for that. So you use these things for like Parmesan cheese and all kinds of other things. Lemon zest and lime zest works great with the microplane. <clears throat> So I'm just rubbing my ginger on here, and it looks like nothing is happening. It's all kind of collecting on the back side. And when I give it a little tap, it all kind of comes out onto the board. So that looks like about the amount I need. Yep. All right, and then we're going to put in a garlic clove. I like garlic. Let's put in two small ones. Give that a whack. 
And then I cut off kind of the root end, which is where it attaches to the rest of the head of garlic. And then the skins pop off. Okay. Get rid of the skins. Something else. And again, I'm just going to give this a quick little chop. Okay. In goes my garlic. Last but not least, we have a quarter teaspoon of ground coriander. And then we'll season it with salt after we get it blended up. Okay, I need to do a little scraping. My spatula, I'm gonna mix stuff around here. I think this would also work fine in a food processor. It might even work better in a food processor because it's a little thick. Okay, let's see here. There we go. There goes the ice cube. Okay, I see it starting to kind of whir around at the bottom, so I want to scrape down and get everything integrated. And then we'll give it one more zap to get all of those um, greens chopped up so it's nice and smooth. Okay, one last time. Progress. Okay, there is that sauce. Looks really pretty. All right, I'm going to just check the spicy level here. Kind of hits you after. Definitely needs salt. I'm going to put in two generous pinches of salt. Um, again, I'm using the kosher salt just because I'm kind of used to using that. Okay, so that is that little sauce, and it'll be ready for us to plate up in a couple minutes. So next, I'm just going to whisk together quickly the vinaigrette for my grilled ratatouille, and then we will put everything together on some bowls and on some platters. All right, so I don't think I need these extra jalapeno seeds. I'm gonna stick those over there. All right, let's get a large large bowl. I'm gonna do the vinaigrette in here, and then as I chop, I will just add the veggies to the vinaigrette. So we just need um, three tablespoons of sherry vinegar. If you don't have sherry vinegar, you could do some champagne vinegar. You could do, oh, am I about out? I'm almost out, oh, just enough. Um, you could do really kind of any combination. Your flavor profile will change a little bit. You know, balsamic has a very distinct flavor. I'm gonna add, some, I have a little tiny bit of champagne vinegar left, but it's short there, so I'm gonna stick in a little extra there. Okay. And then we're gonna do some basil. Here's my basil, I picked it a few days ago. It's actually flowering because it's been in this water. So your basil will hold for days if you just stick it in a little cup of water. So this has already been rinsed off. I'm just gonna pull the leaves off and give them a little chop <clears throat> and throw it in. There's that one. And then if you want to get fancy, if you're plating this up like for lunch or something and want to do a chiffonade, 
you can do some little basil confetti on the top if you want to garnish. And that all that entails is you stack about two basil leaves, maybe three, and then you roll it up crosswise. So I have this tiny little roll of basil leaves here, and then stick it down on the board. And you just want to cut it into little thin strips. And then it's kind of like you have little basil confetti right here. So you can do whatever you want for this. You know, this is just going to get mixed up with a bunch of the other veggies. So for the rest of this, I'm just going to give it a quick chop. I kind of like to bunch all the leaves together and then proceed and go across in a couple different ways here. All right, there's the basil. That can go in there. Throw in those little bits too. All right, a tablespoon of minced fresh thyme. So I went ahead and did a little bit of a start on this. So the thyme, you know, here's the sprigs. And what you want to try and do is just grab onto the top and then strip the little leaves off. So that's kind of the quickest way to get the leaves off of your thyme sprigs. You know, don't try to pick one at a time off. That'll make you crazy. So just grab the top, strip it down, and then there's usually a little bit left at the top. I just throw that in. The little leaves at the top usually have very, um, they're very tender, and so they can just be put in with their stems. So that's how you get all of that off. And I think I have what I need here. We want about a tablespoon of the thyme leaves. You can mince it up if you want, if there's some stems that are left on the top, or you can just, you know, strip it off and throw them in just leaves as, as is. So there's my thyme. And we're gonna put in some garlic, one or two cloves, whatever you'd like to do. <clears throat> you know me, I'm doing two. Um, let's see here. What else do I need to do? Oil, vinegar, basil pie. Yep. Okay. So after the garlic, I'm just going to put in a little bit of olive oil, and I'm going to use some of the higher end oil that I have. I have a little bit of oil from Cipe Grove. They have a retail store in Venetia. Um, their olive oil is high in polyphenols, and it's um, really good for your health. It's good for your heart. It's good for cholesterol, I've heard them say. You can check out their website. It's S-E-P-A-Y Groves. And they have, they work with a lot of olives that are grown around Sassoon and in the Fairfield area. All right, there's my garlic. So for the olive oil, I'm going to put in about a quarter cup. Let me grab a little liquid measuring thing here. I might have a trickle left in here. And then I'm gonna supplement with um, some oil from uh, Sky Ranch. This is harvested from um, a mountain near Vacaville. So it's way up about 2000 feet in elevation is where they grow both wine, grapes and um, olive trees. <clears throat> And this is a really nice oil. I like it. It's fairly um, medium bodied and, um, you know, very user friendly. Let me grab a whisk here. Doesn't have any super strong peppery flavors. All right. Just want to try and get the oil and the vinegar mixed together. It won't be completely emulsified, but it'll be somewhat combined. All right, and now we will start chopping and mixing in with our vinaigrette. So the eggplant I'm just doing in kind of, you know, little chunks. You know, ratatouille is usually, you know, I always think of like little squares of things. 
<clears throat> so you can really kind of do this however you want. You could even do like a fun kind of composed thing where you layer it up in a stack or something. You know, you can get creative with this if you feel like um, doing some fun and interesting plating options. All right, let me line up the zucchini. I don't think I'm going to have to cut the zucchini lengthwise. It's skinny enough, so I'm just going to go across and get those pieces, and then we'll do the little skinny ones. All right, there's the zucchini. Next, we have our peppers. I'm just going to line these up on my board. You know, I already cut them into halves. And so this is just going to be a quick, you know, chop crosswise. I'm kind of making a bunch of little square pieces across the board. They're about an inch or so in shape, little inch squares. There's the peppers. All right, we have our onions. And for these, this was a relatively tiny onion. So I'm just cutting these in half. And what will happen is the layers are just going to kind of fall apart as I mix it. So those go in. And then our tomatoes, super juicy tomatoes. I'm going to dump that juice in here, too. Let's use it all up. So my tomatoes um, have gotten a little soft, but they have not completely lost their shape, which is kind of what you want. And there's a little bit of charring on here to help with the flavor. All right, so there it is. I'm going to leave this last eggplant piece out. Okay, let me grab. <clears throat> give this a little stir. And we'll get our vinaigrette and our herbs mixed around to all these. Colorful vegetables. Put it in a bowl for you. Okay, so here is our grilled ratatouille. Nice and colorful. And again, you'll want to just taste and see if you have enough salt. We did salt all those vegetables before we grilled, um, you know, but you might, I didn't add any extra salt to the vinaigrette. So that's something that you'll want to just test and taste and go from there. All right, so then we have our carrots. So I'm just going to plate those up. <clears throat> so you could leave these whole or you could cut them in half. I'm going to cut these in half lengthwise because they are so big. I think it's going to, it would be easier to eat, and I think it's going to look kind of pretty, too. So I'll just do a few so you guys can kind of see the caramelization, some of the grill marks. Okay, there's that. And then we have our sauce. Okay, and a little garnish, a few peanuts, and then some of my greenery. If I had kept some carrot tops, we could put a few of those on too as garnish. Let's do a little bit of cilantro. Okay, and then we're done. So there are the carrots with the cilantro yogurt sauce on top. <clears throat>